Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Humble is proud to introduce a brand new bundle. And I'm just kidding, they got bought by IGN and Steam. Yes, Steam, they have added new currencies yet again. But you'll never guess who didn't make the list. Our PCS3 gets UHD support. The games, though, <laughs> we'll see. And Valve's giving you some free VR licensing. The orange box is 10 years old. Yes, that's how long those Half-Life Episode 3 jokes have been around. And since Valve hasn't fixed the Linux client in several months, well, Ike is going to try and fix it from the OS side. Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, taking off the pre-shows and thing, because this is the actual shows and... Joined every week um, by our man from um, Helsinki. Jesus, I'll never learn where this new camera is. Uh, <laughs> joining us at four o'clock in the morning, his time. Five o'clock, almost. Almost five o'clock. Almost. And um, uh, Jack went back to the island in Space Britannia. That is uh, Pedro Mateus. Joining Hello, us at almost three in the morning. Yes. Three in the morning. <laughs> we, we got a good spread. We're all a little punchy, so stay with us. Oh, and next week, since nobody already reminded, we're starting. Oh, yes. Early shows in. I'm just letting everyone know 4.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. So look that up and we're going to plaster that on the Wednesday show and everywhere else. So when you show up and the show's over and no one's around, we're going to laugh. Um, before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life. Organs. Uh, I guess I'll kind of kick it off. I, I, I can't Vulcan, brah. And uh, well, actually, uh, I, I just have an issue with the feral Vulcans. But uh, the fine, fine folk at Alex, I'm from Feral <laughs> at Alex. I don't know if he's at Alex on Twitter. Fer, 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 feral at Alex dot Feral. Uh, dot <laughs> CU dot RU, whatever. Uh, we've been working back and forwards, and it's apparently an issue with having two video cards in your system. It's only affecting their Vulcan betas right now. Uh, hopefully that'll be resolved before we get a, a new title coming out. What's up, Finn, baby? Oh well, I mean, I did the I did that update on uh, on Wednesday. So if you want to check out Weekly Daily Wednesday for that crap, uh, I discovered that uh, the Finnish don't really I have a, a, an idea of what a burrito is. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a there's a there's a Mexican restaurant, well Mexican restaurant next to the hotel. So I decided to check it out, and apparently they they start making a burrito, and about halfway through they turned it into an enchilada because apparently they don't know what the hell is up. <laughs> Well, over here, I've just been uh, hitting refresh like crazy on Amazon, waiting for the RAM to come. Supposedly, it's coming tomorrow, so by the time this comes out, hopefully the Ryzen box motherboard RAM processor thing will be all set up and good to go, and I'll be running some benchmarks and then posting oh. them on uh, Shadow Realm Static. So what I'm hearing is I need to build a Threadripper box now. Got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, playing games on that's gonna suck. No, not it really. really, it really will. So much wasted electricity. Yeah, there is that man. Those things have a crazy TDP, much like the horse that we like yeah. to drag out and beat every week. Yeah. Speaking of wasted, it's the Steam Linux update of oh. the week. All right, I'm going right into okay, it. Okay, so yeah, the orange box came out ten years ago. 10 freaking years. Yeah. So um, uh, if you don't know, the orange box was the uh, eh, like it was a sort of a game it, pack that it, Valve it, released. It was, it was the OG Humble Bundle. Yeah, I think this is kind yeah. of important. Um, um, Robin, he's like the orange box was a huge step for us internally because it was the first time we ever managed to complete more than a single project at a time and or complete a project <laughs> as we later found out. Um, oh yep. snap so uh the the orange box included uh half-life 2 episode 2 uh team fortress 2 portal and uh if you bought it on steam uh audio surf which wasn't uh, uh, the first one isn't available on linux but the second one is so it gets a mention uh but yeah no there was a big thing with half-life 2 episode 2 and the way that it ends and i guess 10 years that's when the statute of limitations goes away so yeah basically everyone on the internet got their pennies up in a twist because oh shit it ends on a cliffhanger 
and you want to know what's going to happen next and how the Borealis from Aperture Science, you know, where Portal takes place, uh, comes into that. And, well... Come, coming spoon. Years later. Red, never. We're still waiting, yeah. We are most definitely still waiting for that. Man, I remember I was over at uh, Daryl's house at a LAN party. This is how long <laughs> ago this was. And... Everyone was playing Half-Life 2 because they got the orange box and all that fun stuff. And I remember, it was like, oh, collective shit was lost. And it's like, oh, man, this looks really good, guys. And not not my wildest imaginations didn't I, I ever think that we would have any of this nonsense on Linux. Yet, you know, here we are. And I, it's kind of neat, man. Yeah, yeah I, I ended up buying uh, that game twice. Uh, I bought it once for the OG Xbox 360. OG Xbox 360, what the fuck? Um, that, that, was, that, was before, uh, that was before I went back into the PC gaming fold because I was poor. Um, and then I bought it again on PC when I finally had a decent computer. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize, though, that they basically had um, the Portal 2 and TF2, or the Portal and TF2 streams going on at the same time. They were essentially sharing resources. They were one logical project. That's kind of yeah. interesting. But yeah, the, the, the orange box was basically the beginning of the end for Valve as a game developer. Uh, well, hey, hey, no, no, they, they released Alien Swarm afterwards. Yeah, and the both of the Left 4 Deads also came after mm -hmm. uh, came out afterwards. But yeah, no, until that stupid card game comes out, I guess and, and, will be and, the final and Dota game too. On that. Uh, See, I, I love the fact that Pedro, you're gonna shit all over this card game when you're the one that is, can't help. Like a Look, cat. If it's a good it. card game, I will sing its praises from the rooftops. And the rooftops around here in Cambridge, they're pretty low. So, you know, set that bar. So, so, so just give him a shove. He'll be fine. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I'm going to send a note to your town council about how you're shitting on <laughs> rooftops being low. In <laughs> see, see I, I think we're, we've just created a new, a new musical, Pedro on the Roof. <laughs> they, they look the short roofs. They're kind of low. Remember? It's kind of like Putin on the Ritz, except it sucks. <laughs> All right, let's go into pricing. Steam games will become much cheaper, but only in select regions. Yeah, the interesting takeaway from this, to save some time, this isn't going to be region locked either. So you want to buy this on the cheap, you get the keys for that. They work anywhere else. And Valve's like, hey, developers, why don't you... Um, Jump in and Miss take your part games of this. accordingly. Oh, hang on. <laughs> no, look, they've updated it. Uh, now it's all, it's maybe not region locked. Um, mm. But, well, so, so the, the idea here is, you know, uh, they, they have this Southeast Asia region where people primarily pirate games. And so Valve says, hey, developers, why, why, why don't you, why don't you lower your price so that people stop pirating your games? And then, you know, we, we, we can take our cut and roll around in your money. I'm not sure yeah. if that's going to really, really help anything, though, because pirates going to pirate. Yeah. Then we got 10 more currencies. Argentina. Hey, man, we finally, finally get some shekels in here, along with some dongs. The V&D. Hey. That's there. Hey, mm -hmm. I, I, today I learned what the Kazakhstani currency is. So that's a thing. No, man, <laughs> that's absolutely totally a thing. And I think Foxy in Space Australia, he pointed out in our show notes was he was like, fucking really? He was like, yeah. All right. Seriously, I, I, I genuinely think that there is a long-standing ongoing bet at valve internally to see how long they can get away with not introducing aud uh well there's probably a whole lot of money to be made from there because the australian dollar it's not exactly as crap nowadays as it used to be so they tend to make a lot of money from every single one of those game sales at so, stupidly so, so, overpriced. so does the government with that digital goods tax Oh, that too. <laughs> but yeah, it's good uh, to see Valve doing something, even if they're not fixing the Linux client. But hey! They're, 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 they are doing something else, though. Um, this is from uh, partner.steamgames.com. The link's all this crap in our show notes, as usual. So, uh, the short version is that Valve is not going to charge you licensing fees if you want to develop VR hardware or VR applications. Uh, you just need to register and tell them that you're doing it, uh, and that's pretty much it. You still got to buy the ASICs, you still got to buy the beefy computers that can run the VR, and you still got to buy the Vives. Vives the Vives? I don't know. Uh, I mean, 
it, it, in principle, it's not a bad idea because licensing really Man, does. I, I'm not going to act- lie to you. The vibes, the vibes. The only thing you're saying that ha- ha- has happened is you just reminded me that the flash is back on. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is, this is true. Um, no, and I mean, in principle, it's not a bad thing. Cause like I was saying, um, licensing woes do cause a chilling effect when it comes to developments mm-hmm. and valve really, really, really want someone to come up with something that will make VR a thing just to justify people actually buying into it. Um, uh, and like I said, like, 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 like been I said, putting though, into yeah. it. <laughs> I, again, gaming space is not where you want to invest in VR. You want to do it in simulations. You want to do it in training, but you know, it's, it's the new hotness. So people are still trying to figure out ways to market this as sort of a gaming platform. <laughs> That's that that that's it's, that that's yeah. It, it might be a good idea. I mean, I think what we're seeing is like VR theme parks. Not really a theme park in the traditional sense, but let's get a big warehouse. Let's set up some practical things, and backpack that shit with some quasi augmented reality. And yeah, uh, all, AR seems to be making some strides. And uh, if we're talking between just you know, virtual reality versus augmented reality. Uh, my money personally is going to augmented reality because that's something I really want to see happen. I, I VR, want an actual scouter, like like a DBZ yeah. scouter. I can clip on the side of my head and like check what people's power levels are. It's funny, much. listen, man. I have some bungee cord and a toaster. Come over, we'll take care of it. But VR, Sounds it's, uh, it's starting it to show that it was just another gimmick. So... Can we it's, stop it's, pouring it's, money it's into that? It's not a gimmick, though. It has, like, real, legitimate applications. It's not like 3D TVs or something like that. It's just people insist on turning it into a gaming thing when it's better suited as something entirely different. I don't I'm know. I'm sure 3D TVs have their use somewhere. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, Listen, the man. Teams. Even the industry realized 3D TVs didn't have their use. I mean, <laughs> but VR... This is Gen 1. Maybe by Gen 3. What it gets down to, sunglasses, weight, five hours of battery, wireless, you'll see it. Right now, you, like I said, you're walking around looking like you're getting face-fucked by a toaster. And then you, uh, you're you going to need a lot of kit. Speaking of kit. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is... This is um the uh, big new announcement there. This is the official stuff. We've been we've been talking about the new ASICs and the new base stations for a while. We haven't really had much in the way of specifics because none of us are VR developers and therefore are qualified. That doesn't stop us from talking <laughs> about it anyways. Um, but uh, we get the new claim now that the new base stations will be able to uh, allow for 10 times the square footage tracked, which is great if you have, like, a, like Ben said, a warehouse where you can run around with the wireless VR kit and like not have to worry about bumping into things. But um, yeah, now, now you're just going to have ample room to break like shit in your house. You're just going to crash into things at some point though. I think they really are trying to get to the, to the place where we can have the hollow shed so that evil simulated Abraham Lincoln can come and try and murder <laughs> us. No um, one really wants to walk into the hollow shed because they're filled with ghost and that can be problematic. Personally, what, what do you think, Pedro? I think they, they actually should be, instead of expanding, I understand why they're expanding, because the growth that we're seeing is like the VR big sets that people want to do. Yeah, but, it's the people who actually have the money to invest in VR, yes. Well, I mean, it's a big buy, period. But even the people with a wet, stinky cash sitting around thinking about doing it, um, they can't necessarily dedicate an entire room to VR. I mean, hell... A lot can even, they, they don't have enough space to clear out just for a basic setup with the lighthouses, you know, the mm-hmm. minimal space. So, uh, uh, in, in, incidentally, my buddy Sharpie does have space to do that. And he still punched a hole in his TV. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, that's the only thing coming out of VR that I'm actually into is all the videos of someone with a camera pointed at them. You don't even get to see what they're playing. You just see them fumbling around and falling flat on their face or trying to lean on a table that isn't there or punching a hole through a TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I did like that one where like the guy's like trying to open up a panel on the floor and he just smacks his face on the ground. <laughs> uh, man, I, I, listen, that, that's a legitimate use case for VR is um, gifts. Hi, um, hi I'm yes. Gabe Newell and this is Jackass. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, Steve, oh, hey man, you could revive your career with that. Um, more rubes always better. But then again, as I was saying, I don't know that many people who could take advantage of it. Like here, down here. Because I, I just cleared out, you know, all this business to put all this business in. And, yeah, I could set up maybe two lighthouses per side of the basement. So, but I'm going to do that. I, I think Empty's got his set up in his apartment. And mm -hmm. good on him for that and space mm -hmm. restrictions. But then again, I don't know. Aren't you constantly just petrified of breaking something? I, I know that's I know why you I, take all the breakable stuff and you hide them in a cupboard no, somewhere. Or, or or you have a spotter who basically whose job is essentially to get in between you and the breakable shit. See, you you don't understand most of my IRL friends because they're searching for the house for the most expensive breakable shit they can find to stack <laughs> right. in the line. Yeah. No, they're, no, they just like throw it at you while you're in VR land. <laughs> oh, they just save the time. You just hear stuff breaking around the house. Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> It was going to happen anything. It was ordained. Um, one of our favorite games that we like to play in the mm -hmm. after shows is Rocket Cars. And Rocket League patch notes for 138 are out. Really on Linux, the only thing that uh, they fixed, which you kind of hoped that they would fix, was the country stadium that we can kind of see here. Because yep. it was covered in blackness imprisoning me. All that I see, absolute GL shading glitchiness. And so, so it looked like a game of serious Sam Fusion and Vulcan? Basically, basically. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, that's sorted. Bunch of little fixes. Uh, okay, uh, something, something that kind of got a smile out of me, though, because it was enough of a known issue that they, they listed it in the bug fix was fix several issues with in-game grass so that it, that's, that's what you get no that's what you get for using unity grass <laughs> <laughs> it's not unity grass it's a real engine 3.1472 yeah yolo swag i think it's unreal it? engine 3 though right it's unreal engine yeah, 3 something like that yeah yeah well, it's uh, but that, yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, the the one if you do a control F for Linux, it's shared with Mac and it's the farmstead map visuals have been updated. And yeah, that that's literally all it means is that they fix the uh, texture fuck up that made the walls look black. Apparently, if you're on an Xbox one, though, you just got to keep restarting Rocket League and eventually the game will unfuck itself. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. I launched it. I went to the farm map because that was the map that was added in the latest mm -hmm. update and i expected to be blown away this was going to be amazing it's like really all right uh, yeah. the only thing i noticed was that the oh look the ground has some like uh, goopy texture to it that kind of drags as the wheels go uh, over it that's no one's ever going to notice oh, that well, why did you say that that that's going to cause all the re to start reporting it's like this texture's terribly goofy um, <laughs> I, I, I i heard goopy i'm like Ugh. Anyways, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, we'll all go to exile at some point because let's face it, no one's ever going to. My internet died. It, it's your story, Pedro. Yeah. Yes, I know. My internet died for a moment there. <laughs> um, Clearly. So, uh, so um, patch notes for Exile uh, 1.5. This beautiful game, because Pedro's um, internet just died, that's kind of brilliant. It's out, and really all you need to know is it has went free to play. It's, uh, it's a thing, yeah. man. Yeah, you still got to pay for the extra character slots. Basically, from what I've seen of it, and Pedro could comment on it because he's actually played it, but of course he's dead now. So mm -hmm. let, let's let's have a moment of silence. Moment over. Right. Uh, it's like a it's like a player unknowns battlegrounds Dota Diablo hybrid where you just basically wander around and murder people. I guess. Um, I'm what I I I don't really know. They 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 have some bug fixes, like you said. 
And as I'm reading through this article, because I need talking points. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, they, there's a there's a three hour. They had a three hour window with the survival mode that they have uh, removed. So now, if you're just playing the game for free, you can just uh, you know rock and roll play the game. I I, I downloaded it. it's a re- reasonably small download, man. It was like 500 megajoules. And that, that, that's small these days. Jeez. I listen. Yeah, we, we used to have these fancy CDs because they were larger than our um, hard drives. And um, I, I tried it out, launched it at easy. I didn't have to go through a character creation or anything like that. And it's like, oh, I'm just going to be frank. And I done that. First thing you're met with is the Unity screen of Nope. So keep that. Not, not, not even not even the Unity bloop of Nope. Nope. And uh, that, that kind of sucked. And launched it. And I couldn't get over the uh, sidewalking, crab walking character animation. It's just like uh, isometric 2.5D. <laughs> so, so it's like MC Hammer just walking around. Break it uh, Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, in all fairness, it's early access. So maybe it'll get better. But yeah, right right now it is definitely priced appropriately. I, I think uh, that uh, apparently they're on season eight. So there's. <laughs> There are seven seasons of this. Well, uh, I, I guess we need to get get to the chopper. Yeah. So this is um, this is Helleborn. Um, it is uh, what what it's helicopter combat. Apparently, it's a long forgotten genre. I had no idea that it was a genre. Period. But uh, they have a uh, they have the new version out. Or no, it's the it's the actual release. It's coming out on the fourteenth, which is today. So ta da. Ta-da! It's out. Uh, they they have uh, twenty new helicopters, three new maps, a night map, a squadron system, frontline PvP mode. It's basically World of Tanks for choppers. If you like wandering around pretending that you're Airwolf or I don't know something, you can you can you can uh, you can do it. Uh, one thing I did notice though on the system requirements though is you specifically need nine. The minimum requirement is nine hundred eighty six megabytes of RAM. It sucks because yeah, I just kind of want to apologize to everyone watching the video because they all have uh, all along the watchtower playing in their head right now. Of of course they do because that anything with a helicopter needs all along the watchtower. Basically, I'm, cu- I'm curious though if they have joystick support so you can actually like pretend you're in a chopper. I don't know, man. Uh, uh, you that, said that, it's that, that, like, could, that um, could be a little fun. World of Tanks. If World of Tanks costs 19.99 to play with, whoa, all right, 32.91 of DLC. Ooh, hot um, damn. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Uh, th- th- that's there, there. There's just too much confusion, man. I can't get no relief. Can't get any relief from that. I don't. Um, I, I would definitely give it a shot. You know, honestly. There we go. But I, I don't know if I'm going to throw twenty bucks to that. The DLC. I could didn't get a chance to see if it was cosmetic or not. But I mean, I'll try it. What do you uh, think, Pedro? Ca- camouflage packs. Camouflage pack. Camouflage pack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems that way. It's uh, it's a PvP MMO. I don't. Oh wait, you're already on the helicopter thing. Well, uh, no, no, no. We're, we're talking about VR, Pedro. What do you what do you want about? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh wait, I went back in time. Damn, wait, uh, no, Pedro. We just relived what would happen if you actually died on the show in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. But yeah, no. Uh, the uh, helicopter game, surprisingly, according to the Steam reviews. Um, it was, um, not a terrible game. Of course, at this point, right now, if I've gotten to the point where relying on the Steam reviews is actually something that's totally feasible and you can do, sorry about that, uh, video watchers, that was Skype just resetting my video because, uh, give it another second, it'll do it again. Um, yeah, no, it's a, um, it's really... I looked at it at first, it's like, oh, it's a Unity game, and no, no, apparently people are saying it's actually kind of alright, so I sent them an email, remains to be seen whether or not they'll reply, and maybe we'll get a chance to try it. I don't know, man, it's just going to, uh, the, oh, there's just going to be a lot of Full Metal Jacket quotes, I mean, listen, everything- How? How do you kill women and children? I just say, we, all of our stuff already gets demonetized. Thank you for being a patron, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls. But that that one's probably going to get noped off YouTube if we record that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to oh, be yeah. bad. Uh, I think we got so, one more thing before we get out of here. Yes. Pun- punching yes. bags. Yeah. So, uh, 
hopefully my internet won't die again. Uh, this is uh, Solus. Uh, it's that distro that uh, Ike Doherty and Joshua Strobel oh, and a couple you others. Um, I- Ike from Solus? Yes. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, I-, I heard he worked at uh, Intel. Once. Yeah, he did. Okay. Uh, and yeah. apparently Solus is making enough wet stinkies from their Patreon that, uh, well, he's now working on it full time. And it's one of those distros that's not really based on anything. So uh, they've been building it from the ground up uh, for a long, long time. And now they have decided to take snaps and fix the Steam runtime. And it's not just uh, including the libraries in a snap and shipping them out. No, no, they're doing more than that. They're actually setting up uh, a way that the system will go out and get all the calls that Steam makes to libraries and make sure it just makes sure that Steam cannot use anything but the system libraries or the uh, runtime libraries in the snap. Now... Eventually, uh, I was talking to Ike earlier today, and he said that the end game, for the most part, is to create a better version of SteamOS, because Valve apparently doesn't give a damn anymore. So someone else has got to, and they're the ones doing it. So they've gone in and replaced all of the runtime libraries. That's, with a, that's a very ones. big thing. I mean, the... the uh... They're making it work on their distribution. No, 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 no. That's part of the reason why they're using Snaps. So, so, you can so, so, so that it works on Ubuntu only. Right, yeah. one other distribution as opposed to uh, the universally No, even Fedora form. supports Snaps. Yeah, but nobody's like, using yeah. Snaps. Yeah, even... <laughs> even, <laughs> even oh, yeah. I don't think uh, any Fedora... That's hey, man, I hate to break said. this to you. Even Solus Origin was like, yeah, flat packs. Now they're like, oh, Snaps will be the other yeah. distribution that uses them. Yeah, so... It's they went with snaps. Personally, I would have gone with flat packs, but like the rest they, of the they want to use snaps, but whatever, just whatever. Uh, there was uh, one issue that came up when they started replacing all the libraries from the runtime with up to date ones. Uh, one of them was with dirt that caused the game to not start properly because Feral does some fuckery with their library, naming. Uh, Namely, they don't use the standard uh, Linux naming for libraries. Uh, so they, instead of pulling like libsdl 2so 0 they were pulling libsdl 2so uh, 2.0.5. It was really annoying, and he managed to figure it out, and now uh, the Linux Steam integration, which is what they call the tool, what it does is that it actually picks up on all the libraries that Steam is calling and names them accordingly so you can use whichever versions you damn well please so long as they still share that same ABI. Um, but yeah, kudos that, 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 to... That would be a little problematic, though, on uh, modern distributions, uh, though. And I'm, I'm curious as well, uh, how, how does this ultimately impact performance if this is some kind of interceptor as well? It doesn't. Uh, there's a bit, according to Ike, there were a couple of milliseconds of latency introduced when starting a game. But the actual performance of the game itself is just fine. Uh, yeah, the, I, I, I guess because that just does it on the startup and once it's yep. all in memory, it's all in memory. It's all in memory. Uh, and the, um, the worst offenders really do seem to be feral ports because of what I mentioned. And it fixes a lot what they, the goal here was to fix a lot of the issues that Steam has. If you're using the Mesa drivers and you just install Steam and try to run it, not going to work. It just won't work because the libstd C++ and glibc libraries that are included in the runtime are stupidly old, so those need to be removed or renamed so that Steam can see them. Uh, if you ever try to watch a trailer in full screen from the Steam store, well, you know how that song and ass goes, but they've managed to fix that too. And if you've ever tried to use, the, for some reason, uh, ever tried to start um, Steam on Wayland, you will have realized that it's actually using X Wayland. So if you have the NVIDIA drivers, Shit ain't gonna work, son. No, so, so so basically what you're saying is just install something Fedora or Ubuntu based so you don't have all these problems in the first place. 
Uh, no, go yes. ahead and try and do any of those things on Ubuntu or Fedora. Why would anybody try to do any of those things on a Ubuntu or Use the Mesa drivers? Yeah. Use Steam and Wayland? No, with the Mesa drivers? Why, why, why would you ever try to do that? Because you're on an AMD card. But I'm coming up or next! Or an Intel card? Yeah, two, th <laughs> two things that you should never do. <laughs> a a a anyways, coming up next... Uh, I don't, we're, 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 we're going to get humble. Listen, man, if you're going to be doing freedoms. coming up next, you need to get your fucking A game. I see you yawning in the background. <laughs> Fuck you, man. It's five o'clock <laughs> in the goddamn morning. I love you too. And, uh, <laughs> go ahead and, oh yes, please, Jordan, cry some more. Stick around. There's going to be, actually, there's going to be a whole lot of news this week. Shut it's up, Pedro. Quit promising segment. shit we can't deliver. No, no, no. It's actually a reasonably sized news segment this week, so stick around for that. But before we get to the news, well, we have some uh, lovely, lovely people who keep on giving us money for some reason. <laughs> Thank you they, all. They, Thank they, you very they, much. They hit, us. They, they hit us. They want us to show up to be awake at, like... Five o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Are you kidding? Scream. They actually hold hate watch parties. They, they really do in California. Yeah, there is one currently <laughs> happening right now. And if you want to get on the hate train, if you want to chug Ooh. down that haterade, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, click the support the shows and button. We got Amazon affiliate links. We got Amazon wish lists. If you want to buy stuff, we got we're part of the Newegg affiliate program now. Ooh. So that's that's the thing. If you want to <laughs> you want to fund. Um, the chief legal officer of Newegg's fight against patent trolls and help us out. You can you can do both those things. There are PayPal donate buttons and a Bitcoin link if you want to wire us some magical internet money. Hey man, I heard that Bitcoin thing's going to die any day now. So let us make use of it before it turns into nothing. Just like yeah, y'all yeah, 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 got to get on that coin yet? And we'll put it to use. Yeah, it absolutely. Is. But of course, if you, if you want to get all the cool stuff, you can head on over to Patreon.com/slash Linux Game Cast. Where a good number of you are uh, giving us what 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 are we at the week this yeah, time around? Let's take a look. This week we are uh, two hundred and twelve per Saturday night train wreck, helping us fund this show and our Wednesday shenanigans and our Tuesday shenanigans and Thursday. We have a hundred and four bosses, hundred and four people that keep us going. What were you saying, man? Yeah, they they it's tell crazy. us to file our TPS reports properly, and we got to hear it hundred and. 86 times or 104 times or whatever anyways you get a lot of cool stuff by signing up for patreon you get access to the show notes you get a patreon only rss feed you get to be a fly on the wall on our production meetings because the the pre pre super shows and as we call it uh you can even get access to the uh, discord channel where uh, empty is furiously working on a bot to uh integrate with uh, the show title, so you can bang suggest from Discord if you're so inclined. No, it's pretty Lots cool. I mean, it helps us make some cool things. Uh, one thing I was able to get done this week, if you are kind of new to the Linux, kind of new to the Blenders, uh, I found that there was not a very clear instructional, like, boom, let's get this in and out in five minutes, to setting up the kudos on Blender with your NVIDIA card. Uh, now there is. So you helped make that possible so people will learn about linux and all the fun stuff that that involves um we got the guy uh mike g right man we got yeah, yeah. mike g is a new Ma patreon mike g, he's new a executive right now. producer patreon yeah man he upped his yeah. pledge he's cool like that it's awesome so he's got his uh custom rink in if i can find the right screen right there in our discord right there and he has there's access. a mike g somewhere he is, man. He's hiding out, man. He's quiet. Doing his yeah. thing. It's kind but, of uh, Yeah, it's great. But I, I want some Doritos, guys. Some Doritos? Mm, some, uh... Maybe, 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 uh, maybe to wash it down some Mountain Dew. Ah, oh, bro. If there, <laughs> if, there, if, if there was some way to fund that, maybe maybe, maybe <laughs> I could go talk to some sort of magazine company. Uh, well, I don't know why you would bring that up, because we're, we're talking about the Humble Bundle, and they're they're only joining forces with uh, IGN guys that clearly says right here on their blog that, that we're just joining forces where uh, we're, the enzymes are collaborating and we're just getting together, you know, having a little fuck mother and powwow talking with each other and, uh, and you know, just sharing a ah, fuck off. A uh, humble bundle has <laughs> been acquired by media giant IGN. You know him, you hate him, and some of you even hate him more. 
might be able to say, rightfully so. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you thought Humble had already turned into yet another soulless storefront? Question mark. Shit. You ain't seen nothing yet. Um, I really didn't like the way the Humble blog danced around the fact that IGN now straight up just owns all things Humble. And mm-hmm. IGN itself is owned by J2 Global, who also owns of Davis, PC Mag, Asmin, Geek.com, Everyday Health. But uh, really the big thing with me, I, I guess like really the big thing with me is I, I do feel that like immediate what we're seeing right now in short term, uh, this is, this is really hurt humble because I, you know, the IGN hate trade already tore out of the station, man. And <laughs> this is before they've had a chance to really cock anything up and do anything massively stupid. Ideal world. I think, correct me if I'm right, is if everything works right uh, and everything's at face value, which it rarely ever turns out to be the case. They're just going to hand, um, Humble some wet stinky cash and Humble's going to be able to continue on with whatever fucking grand idea they have, which apparently is just becoming another online store to sell games. So monthly bundles, man, you can, you can buy yeah. the same games that you already own for cheap. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, if you thought that Linux support was getting just a teeny tiny bit too sketchy when it came to humble bundles, well, <laughs> it's not even going to be a priority now because uh, I hope I'm wrong with this one, but I really haven't seen much of anything Linux related in IGN outside of the Steam Machine bashing. Well, I don't think that is necessarily because I know a lot of people I've seen, you know, hit me with messages and stuff like that. They, they've said, well, this is they're going to get rid of Linux. Not necessarily. I mean, Linux is here now. It's it's in the yeah, engine. It's, it's here, easy it's to not- do. It's going to be even less of a priority now than it has been for Humble. Well, it's not time. like, okay. I, I, no. I mean, let, let's let's spool up the Booga Booga drive about hey, it. Hang on, hang here, on, here. hang on. Uh, okay. I do believe it might absolutely 100%, maybe sort of, kind of affect the actual Humble bundles because that is known to where they'll say, okay, maybe this doesn't have a port or this is the first time something coming to Linux. But the regular bundles where we get two or three Linux games, that's just a side effect of developers not going to leave money on the fucking table. Come on. Yeah, and Humble Humble's really gotten out of the porting business a while ago. So this I don't really think this is going to impact anything necessarily directly Linux related. I think definitely there's going to be a lot more shovelware bundles. I think ultimately <laughs> it's just going to the bundles are just going to become all IGNified. They're going to be there's there's going to be some vertical integration because that's what this sort of acquisition is all about is funneling people from IGN to Humble and vice versa so that they can get the, the currency exchange. That That's really all this is about. I, don't I know, guess... Man. I don't... Uh, honestly, I, 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 I mean, yeah, if we want to go to wild, baseless speculation town, let, let's do it. Let's get, on, let's get on the car. Let's hop on the bus. What the, sh- the hell show have you been on for the past five years? <laughs> <laughs> this is Speculationsville. Population we, we, we got that locked all down, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> We are the bus. <laughs> right? We, we laid the rails. But it's a thing. It's too early to tell. Uh, are the fears founded? Possibly. IGN is not well liked. But I think if everything just works out swimmingly, it'll they'll take Amazon's approach to Twitch, which I hope they take that model, even though Amazon should go into Twitch and unfuck some of the high school shit there. But... Amazon basically threw money at Twitch and said, you guys keep doing what you're doing. Peace out. And yeah, yeah more, more or less, this, this is just to collect more money. It's a strategic acquisition. But speaking, uh, speaking of Humble, if you want to pick up some uh, Linux, well, if you want to pick up two Linux games for cheap, you can uh, check <laughs> two, out the two Humble games. Headless RPG Lands bundle. So basically, if you don't already own the two Borderlands games, and they're really good ports, Aspire did them back when they were interested in doing Linux ports. Uh, you can get them for about 10 bucks. The, you get Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. These other games, no Linux version, so it's not worth talking about them at all. Thoughts? Yeah, 10 bucks uh, for the pre-sequel and Borderlands 2. I, if, if you don't have them, I, I'm not going to lie to anyone. I mean, Borderlands, I, I'm not crazy about them. They're kind of fun to play in multiplayer, mainly because I don't have a clue what's going on. 
And so I just run around shooting things and end up dead a lot. It's kind of like IRL. Uh, but yeah, 10 bucks, you, you really can't beat that. I will give everyone a pro tip. This is something that kind of caught me off guard. Borderlands built using Unreal Engine 3 technology, correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't run that great on Ryzen. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. It's kind of what I thought. Still got some herky jerks on a um, 1700 at, depending on what day it is, somewhere between 3 gigahertz and 3.8. Which which was weird, uh, too, because I got decent performance. I was getting 60 FPS on the uh, Thuban, the X-Core. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I was playing it on the calculator back in the day with the first generation laptop i3. So, yeah, that's weird. I don't know if it's just, you know, welcome to the future game. Here's 16 threads and it's shitting itself trying to figure out, you know, how to, you know, traffic Should cut be? that. Or, I mean, I'm not saying it's unplayable, but there's definitely like it's got a herky jerk in it on the occasion more so than I think I just noticing on my 8150. I'm not. a mm. So. Mm, just keep that in mind. But then again, I'm yeah. playing everything max the hell out. Then again, I have two video. I mean, there's all types of weird shit that could be the, on this end. So still 10, 10 watt stinky caches. Go ahead, pick it up. You have a good time. I am a little curious though, because we lost skull girls. We lost girl skull girls. And by that, I mean, it came to Linux. Thanks they to, um, <laughs> C- C- Civic, who's actually Civic. speaking up in uh discord. He, he's What's in discord up? right now. Uh, mm-hmm. So we couldn't pick on that anymore. So we immediately had to go to the tried and true, the granddaddy, the actual Duke Nukem Forever of Linux, Lou Garou Part 2, Overgrowth. And uh, we had a bit of news this week, Pedro. Oh, yes. Yes, we did. So as it turns out, uh, Wolfire, the, the same people behind Humble, uh, are releasing the final beta for Overgrowth. Uh, It's beta 6, and, well, it's out now. Uh, They say that it features a new story mode. It's feature complete. They just need a couple of weeks of final testing before they get out of... uh, Just back the microphone. uh, Before they get out of beta and release Overgrowth 1.0. Now, they say that they will continue to support Overgrowth uh, into whatever version... Uh, and exploring new ideas as to what game they will make next. So you can look forward to it over the next 12 years, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, honestly, this is a, like a crazy long development time. And I, I actually liked Luguru back when it came out on Humble. I, I, put, a, I put a bunch of good hours in there. Um, so I was actually kind of looking forward to Overgrowth, but it's one of those things where it took way too long, and now I'm just like... When when it when it does come out, I'll I'll definitely I'll I might pick it up if it's cheap, but uh, I I just can't be asked anymore. It's I've I've waited too long. I've burned out on my enthusiasm, and now I have a lot of other shit I can play. Well, there's definitely a bunch of shit. I mean, when this first started in development beat up, everyone was like, "Holy shit." This is gorgeous. We don't have any because this is way before Steam showed up. Mm-hmm. This is so, before Metro. Yeah, we we had we didn't have anything that looked even. But I mean, we had a couple of games like Prey, thanks, Ziggy, um, that looked decent. But I mean, this thing looked genuinely gorgeous. I'm not saying it's fugly by any means today, but now that it's rolling out, uh, it looks so, so, it looks all right. And to be perfectly honest with you, I never wanted to pay twenty nine ninety five for the privilege of testing something that's been in development for like seven years. Um, yeah. Here's what I want to know, or just like, let's play Speculationville on this. Basically, what if seven to nine years or whatever, however long it's been in development mm-hmm. is kind of went to like, meh, all right, here's an update, here's the thing, whatever. What the fuck lit the fire under their collective ass organs in 2017 to where they went from, meh, here's an update to ship, we got to get this thing out the door. I, IGN bought them, that's what. Oh, well, <laughs> Money from IGN, oh. Crap, we could actually get money for making games before we sell them, you know, not counting early access. Less. Huh. Uh, but yeah, no, it's. I am curious to see what all these years of development did, but just not 25 pounds curious. Well, that, that's. It's, here's another question for you then, Brad. Do, do you think they're going to try to raise the price once it's out of early access? 
It's oh, very they're going possible. to be shit on if they try that. Mm. Like from all the rooftops, it's like you fucking war. <laughs> well, once again, we keep coming back to Pedro on the roof, man. It's uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, 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 we gotta get like Lin Manuel Miranda to start writing some music or something. I don't I'm know. telling you, man, it's gonna be great. It, it's it's gonna be roof the musical. But it's not what you think. <laughs> you, you gotta go see it for yourself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the it's the sequel to Brick Simulator. Speaking of things the getting roof, high, the roof, the roof is on. Yeah. What? So uh, our PCS three, our favorite psychopaths who are not allowed to mention Persona 5 at all. They have nothing to do with Persona 5 whatsoever. Yep. Uh, they're introducing high-resolution rendering. So now you can... Up- so now they have um, in software, so you, you don't have to... You don't have to have... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, nah, brain. Damn it. <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning. Can't think. Essentially, the emulator will now support upscaling textures to up to UHD, which is kind of nuts if you want to play your PlayStation 3 games at super high resolutions because you have one of those monitors that go pew every couple months and you want to you play some PlayStation 3 games on there, go ahead. They have some screenshots for Demon Souls. They got some for uh, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, and Yakuza 4. Here's the, here's the thing about that, though, is PlayStation 2, um, those textures were actually like 1080p textures, so if you upscaled them, um, they actually still look good. I remember... Uh, roommate and I were playing Mega Man Legends on a res- on an emulator. We were playing that at t- upscaled at 1080p, and that looked... Or it was, it was not 1080p, it was 1650 by 1080 because it's like the 4x3 equivalent. And it looked pretty bad because those textures do not scale. Um, if that is the case with some of these games, um, because a lot of the times the, um, the, the textures in PlayStation 3 games are 720p, the PlayStation 3 could theoretically do 1080p, but it was still upscaled 10, uh, 720p. Um, I'm not sure how well this stuff will all look. Our PSCS3 supposedly d- works some magic in between that to make it look better, and the screenshots look all right. But yeah, I'm interested to see what this looks like in the real worlds. It's uh, it's like the whole. It's not you're not actually rendering a picture when you're talking machine level. You're just taking a collection of pixels and saying, okay, this pixel goes here, this pixel goes here. So. Vector graphics could, in theory, be upscaled to whatever and not lose any quality. So it it is interesting. I, I'm i very much with Jordan on this one. I really want to know how they're actually upscaling those textures to make them look that good. Because the comparison with Demon Souls specifically, going from 720p to 4K, besides not helping the fact that I really want to play it, uh, it looks really really good it's, like it's also it's also going to introduce details. quite a huge performance hit as well so you're going to need a bps oh, yes. system if you want to pull this off while, while true i mean vector you're not dealing with actual graphics you're just dealing with maths so mm-hmm. that's definitely a thing and i don't think um because a lot of people think hd texture pack i, I think everyone flies immediately back to uh, where most of the games that we've seen with this is like n64 titles Mm-hmm. And that that was and a bit Skyrim. jarring, yeah. It, or Skyrim, and you see low texture, high texture, stuff like that. PS3 yeah. era, they they were getting up there on there. So I mean, you know, you you can upscale 480p content. So I, I don't understand why you couldn't do this. Yeah, yeah. Like 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 like, like I said though, this is all that's all well and good in theory, but we gotta actually start playing around with this to see how it is. In practice, um, but again, our PCS3 doing great, great work. Advancing, advancing the Vulcan cause, um, <laughs> entirely open source. It's good stuff. Just don't talk about Persona Five. Mm-hmm. Damn it! Oh yeah, no. no, that's Get away just from a, me, a good DMCA rule of lawyers. No, don't life. drag me off. Ah! <laughs> But up next, we have some deceitful games. Well, not really. It's Deceiver, uh, and it's a game where. You get to launch your spider drone at the wall or the ceiling or even at the enemy's head. Uh, and they say it's a philosophical shooter at the end of the set at the end of the world. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Seriously. It, it, mean, it, it means you get to play as a Tachikoma while someone shouts Ayn, Ra- Ayn Rand at you. And if I want to hear a bunch <laughs> of that crap, I just get on a call with the Atomic Ass. Let's be real. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Uh, 
it's one of those uh, neon aesthetic, no texture. Oh, it's all wireframe and 3D model games. Quit and bitching about still, that. That means it's futuristic. I, no, that mean, I, hey, that I don't like it. I still don't like want. it. I don't. Yeah, just put some textures in. It lo- it makes games look good. I mean, just look at the uh, 720p Demon Souls uh, upscaling thing from the previous story. It looks really good. This one, it just looks like another bare bonesy type of game. I don't know. I mean, I, well, I mean, the it, idea it is on itch. So what listen, man, I will take this shit any day over failed programmer art. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, uh, this I, is I, developed. I want, I want like this this has been developed stuff. by somebody who knew their limitations. Yeah, sure, but then again, Minecraft did relatively well with crappy programmer art. <laughs> yeah, and 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 look where that got us. Everything uses voxels now, like it's going out of style. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I don't have anything necessarily against it. Unfortunately, you know, Ken has not yours uh, because. Well, there's two things. First, it was in some type of alpha mm-hmm. initially that you could download it. Then I go back to check it uh, when I had some time. I was like, uh, I would have put a little bit All of time. All copies claimed. All <laughs> copies claimed. I'm like, what the fuck? It didn't say anything about that to begin with. It's like, But even if you did claim a copy, you needed to install the electron wrapped itch.io client. Oh, fuck that. You didn't twice. need. Dude. It says it on the goddamn page, Pedro. Yeah, they actively recommend that you do so that you get updates. Mm-hmm. But you didn't need to. Oh, okay. So they, they had download links on their page then? They had. All the right. uh, operative term there being... Well, yeah, because all the alpha copies were claimed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, it's expensive to replicate bits. But... <laughs> yeah, bits. It's, they're so hard, The spiders man. ate them all. Hey, it's multiplayer. <laughs> That's the main reason I threw it in the show notes myself. Because we're always looking for things that you know, aren't necessarily locked to steam so we can mm-hmm. kind of get out of that ecosystem from time to time. And it's a thing. Uh, one last bit of programming is, uh, something that kind of, I, I think the, the, the majority of the reaction to this was the fuck that exists. Yeah. More, more like, huh? So in 1999, um, back in the height of the alien versus predator craze, someone had released a game and then that company went out of business and released the source code. And so Icky Butts and a few other people put out a source port for the Linuxes, hosted it on Iculus.org. And apparently they silently updated it a couple months ago. I remember playing this back in high school. This was in the, lo- this was in the rotation between Counter-Strike 1.5, Quake, and Serious Sam. Just because it, it's fun running around as like a predator or pred alien or whatever and, you know, face fucking people. It, it, was, it was the proto VR toaster thing. So, uh, I mean, it, if you if you have the original uh, game, you can probably pick it up on GOG as well. You can play it natively on Linux. It still uses SDL um, 1.2, uses uh, OpenAL and all that good stuff. So you're going to need to have all that installed. So they but, made a newer version of Alien vs. Predator from like 2010. But let's see, the, is this what you're talking uh, about? Uh, it's the OG one. Uh, it came yeah. out in 1999. Yeah, this this yeah. this one this one is the 1999 source. This, this looks very 1999. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, both uh, Alien vs Predator and Alien vs Predator Two look very similar. I'm guessing they run on the same engine. There is probably something that doesn't let the second game run on this uh, open source re-implementation but yeah it was uh updated someone on reddit uh found it and in may may 5th 2017 someone updated um the avp port and it's uh would be nice to know what exactly it was they changed uh, Pro- I didn't probably actually some bug fixes some stability stuff yeah standard st- standard ridiculous fare we we won't know. Maybe someone can send us some hate mails and uh, tell us tell us what's what and call us a bunch of idiots. Yeah, man. Um, um, well, uh, maybe I'll offer to make a Ikea mayonnaise cheese sandwich, and we'll, we'll find <laughs> out. Oh, um, may- mayonnaise and cheese sandwich sounds like some like horrific bachelor food. I'm into it. <laughs> it's a main staple at the Gordon House. 
Um, oh, yeah. Coming up next, though, we talk about Russians with southern accents and why that is absolutely hilarious as we throw some chairs at death points. <laughs> I have perished in the mines of Minas Tirith, and I have returned as Jordan of the White. And I'm here to throw some chairs at Death Point from Ardex Limited, developed on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for around uh, 13, 14 of your local currency. What is it? Death Point is a classic stealth action, which not only should inspire a player, but also surprise him. At first glance, you get almost <laughs> traditional game, tightly staffed with hard levels and various <laughs> tasks. Instead, you are immersed in a different world, fully associating yourself with the main character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm so glad that was just a copy paste off of the. Uh, I, the I, I, okay, I, I, I don't. I don't even think I can top that. What the hell? Okay, <laughs> we're, we're we're doing the chair acquisition. This is where we take a look at some games people send us. We maybe give them a little QA, tell you if it's worth your money, worth your time. Uh, so yeah, death at that point we <laughs> review. Oh my god, that's just so bad. <laughs> okay, the 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 chair acquisition goes as follows: one chair means that it's shit, two chairs means that it's meh, three chairs means that it's pretty good, four chairs means it's awesome. Hey man, well, when you're our- talking about QA, I think we found our first victim here. Um, <laughs> yes, we also got our categories there too: makes with the working, shinies, ass controls, and fun. So. <laughs> Take this away. Does does it work? Oh man, um, <laughs> I, I tried it out on the Ryzen 7 1700, uh, 16 gigajoules RAM NVMe hard drive. Thanks, Stevo. Um, everything worked. I mean, it launched. It's a Unity title. Now you get uh, Unity as a the latest version of the engine has a built-in warning feature where your screen turns blue to mm-hmm. let you know maybe <laughs> what to expect in the future. Uh, no actual issues launching and running the game. Uh, I granted, I've seen better option menus in uh, Flash <laughs> games. Am I right about that, though? I mean, I mean you, oh, you yeah. can disable VSync, but that's that's really it. Also, that's also pretty if you much have an, it. another yeah. monitor, uh, even in. the audio sliders are more of a suggestion until you get all the way down and just cuts off. It's actually kind of jarring. Though, though, on we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. But you probably do want to cut off the audio. <laughs> but 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 anyways, yeah. I mean, it it, it works. It it, it hits sixty on my laptop. Well, what type yeah, of laptop it are you running 60, it on? Then? Yeah, I guess yeah, that's the, the, the i7 6700 HQ with the GTX 960M running Fedora 25 at the moment. Pedro. Yeah, uh, over here I'm on the FX 8370E for now uh, with the GTX 1080. Yeah, it holds 60. If you disable VSync, you get some frame jittering. So I'm guessing the VSync in Unity is actually working now. But yeah, no, the 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 lack of the options menu is bad. Hmm. So yeah. it did launch. I also noticed that some people in the forums, especially on Linux, were having problems with um, it launching in their secondary monitor. That's just yeah. Unity. Yeah, yeah that's I, just I mean, Unity. Yeah, it, it, it loves the hotel room TV when I had that plugged in, so I had to unplug the TV. <laughs> uh, and, oh man, that, that gets really annoying too, because you have to like switch the TV into HDMI mode after it's turned on, which is really dumb. Uh, anyways, I, you know what? what, what Score-wise, what, what, what do you think you're going to give it? I'm, well, I'm I think, give it I think we put all that together. I mean, collectively, if you look at the complete lack of options outside of VSync and... On top of that, the monitor bullshittery that you're going to run into unless you just have a single display. I think round and round, this thing just gets three for working. I mean, it works. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it pretty, starts pretty and much. it works. But the moment you try to change anything, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let's talk about this freaking dialogue because, <laughs> oh my God, it's so bad. The acting is just Clearly, no, clearly they had a bunch of the programmers just sit in front of like a headset mic like what I'm doing and read out some lines. Um, your, your, your two main characters, the, the, the dude and the chick have like this really, really awful like rapport where they're like pseudo hitting on each other, sort of not. And it's just super obnoxious. And the acting is just absolutely terrible. It makes me want to stab my ears out with a freaking toothpick. Well, it definitely sounds like it was read by somebody who needed a check. Um, <laughs> yep. 
Here's the thing. Like the first thing you're greeted with is for some bizarre reason, granted the first like eight seconds of it is like passable for an indie game, a mm. lower, lower rent indie game is this intro action sequence, cars driving in people, Kung Fu fighting and all that. Then it gets to the animation rigging. And that's some of the most laughable bullshit I've seen. I mean, it is a, bad the physics are laughably bad it's like something you would expect to see in like gary's mod or something like that is it? see Gar- that's the thing gary's mod had some effort put into it maybe oh, okay <laughs> this is true and you know you get past that then you, know, you get beat up whatever and th- there's one dude who definitely has a american southern inflection uh with a report with somebody who's clearly of uh Russian, uh, Ukrainian, Eastern European, something. Eastern or European Slavic descent, yes. <laughs> trying to match a Southern accent as well. And that is some of the most fuck mouthing, hilarious things. I, I mean, I, it made me laugh out loud is what the hell's going on here. This is adorable for all the wrong things. What does it look like? Um, am I wrong about this? It's basically think like a PS one game with an HD texture pack. Maybe it's, it's, it's uh, a little better than PS one, but it's, it's pretty standard unity asset chop shop crap. It is. And, uh, someone, I think it was a uh, strider that brought up shadow run during the intermission before we actually started the review. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, sh- shadow grounds, not shadow run shadow grounds. Yeah. Not shadow run. Shadow Grounds. Uh, Shadow Grounds looks really good considering it came out in 2012, mm-hmm. 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, uh, this uh, it falls a bit short in the aesthetics department. Uh, the I guess you, we can't really ding on it all that much because it technically works. Yeah, sure. The animation rigging stops working at certain points. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a point in the video you're watching right now that uh, it just it stops working and the character just scooches along in the crouched position. So <laughs> that was yeah. uh, that was bad. Yeah, cl- clearly there wasn't a lot of work put into like the, the, the visuals here. Not the visuals and, at all. If you look at the lady, I mean, she's like, boom, right out of the gates. It's like, where the fuck did you steal that image? It's completely unrelated to anything I, else I, going on. I th- I, yeah. She kind of reminds me of like Nina from the, from the um, what is it, uh, Tekken a little bit. She's yeah, there for the cleavage and nothing else. Pretty much, pretty much. So, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure this is all around. This is going to be like a two chair for Shiny and Sounds. It squeaks yep. by because images appear on the screen. Noises come out of your speaker. And that's about all you can say about it. Hey, man, maybe it'll make it up in this control section. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you know, considering the lack of an options menu, probably not. No, because uh, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you can't rebind a damn thing because <laughs> uh, if you haven't guessed it by now, yeah, that's right. This is a click export mobile port, um, which you can't, you know, rebind anything. It kind of causes your character because you can use was to move. You better get used to that. Hope you enjoy that. Maybe the arrow keys work too. I didn't try it. Yes, they do. But <laughs> your character moves fucky as hell because this was designed from the ground up to work with touch interface, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, you can I, tell just from looking at the UI. Uh, everything is stupidly far apart. Everything is as you'd expect on an Android game. But, yeah, no, if you're trying to navigate that bullshit with a mouse, then no, no. Now, I, I, was, I was surprised because I plugged in my Steam controller and I moved stuff around and things worked to some degree until you actually needed to use, like, the scanner feature or to run. And then I, I, I went into the Steam controller configuration. Yeah, they just kind of did some spray and pray thing here. So I actually went through and bound some controls to the Steam controller and it was passable. But that should never, ever, ever be a prerequisite. For making mm-hmm. your game playable yeah no the uh what also doesn't translate very well is the fact that uh in android you don't really get an option to rebind controls and well they don't give well, you one seriously Pedro, what would you rebind them to the volume keys uh no 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 you see uh Using space to interact with things hasn't really been a thing since 2001. Or yeah, I was talking about like on Android. Maybe you could bind it to the headphone jack. And <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, you can actually I mean, set you, the... You, uh, could, you could pair a DualShock <laughs> controller with it because it's Bluetooth, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 
Uh, but no, it's the like the sprint key. Uh, on the keyboard, it's just the left shift key, which let's say if you're playing with the directional arrows like I often do because, you know, I have the mouse on the left, keyboard on the right. So I use the directional arrows and I like to be able to use the right shift key to sprint. Well, then fuck me. I guess I'm not getting it. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, this, this the, the controls here are kind of fucky. And, and much, much like shiny and sounds, when you press buttons on your keyboard, it does do things. But they're not particularly responsive. No. I and mean, and all, also, the whole shooting mechanic is really dumb as well. Well, uh, the shooting mechanic sucks, and so does the boop with bottle mechanics. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it, it, God, it, yes. it really does. I don't know, oh, man. man. I personally... Here's the thing. If you don't have rebindable controls or control options, period, not even like preset layouts for spray and play, which is built into Unity, so you're just being fuck you lazy on purpose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in 2017, fuck you, man. You're just going to get two chairs. Cause yep. Yep. That, that's... <laughs> So what, what, what about fun? Because like, here's the thing. For me, stealth games are really tricky to pull off because you need to wait around a lot. So in order to make that tolerable, you have to get like a good sense of tension so that you have some sense of immersion so that you don't feel like you're just waiting around with your thumb shoved up your ass. No, and here game, you're the, just assimilating with the main character, remember? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, Hitman Go did this a lot better. And that was a shitty mobile port too, mind you. But at least, you know... That had some gameplay mechanics. It was a shitty mobile were, port of a like well-established game with a Hitman skin pack on top of it. Yep, pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Um, the 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 one thing that bugs me here is like checkpoints here are just spawn points, and you're gonna get tired of playing the same shit over and over again. So you're gonna walk away, and then you kind of come back and realize, oh, I got to start from the very mm-hmm. beginning of the level, and then listen to the same shitty dialogue again, and deal with the same crappy controls all over again, and it's just not fun at all. Like. This 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 is not a good game. It's just not. No, no, no. It's not. Tons and going back wrong. to your uh, stealth uh, genre argument, there are a few genres that I like, like RPGs, FPSs, uh, racing games. Those I have an inherent bias to like those for some reason. But when it comes to the stealth genre specifically, I'm very very picky. Uh, I think outside of the original <laughs> Thief, the Dark Project, and the sequel, uh, Thief 2, The Metal Age, I don't think any other stealth game have ever even come close to those for me. And I, every time a new stealth game comes out, I'm like, okay, this is it. This is going to be a good one. I really want to like it. And then we get crap like that point. You do like that. And damn it, you... Really should have hid the uh, sandwich under your towel so you could have taken it out halfway through the review and just started eating it. <laughs> Next time. Next, Next time, time. Previously. Um, here's the thing, man. I, every now and then I do like just throwing in a mobile port because we get a lot of mobile ports on Steam. Not just for Linux, but on Windows and Mac and everything else. And sometimes they're done very well. I mean, it's usually extremely rare. And this one, you know, just looking at it on the store, you're thinking, all right, there, there might be a decent game hidden in here. And, uh, yeah, it's not because, no. you know, Death Point, it, it's coming from the type of developers who want to charge, well, are charging $13.99 wet American stinky caches for a game they sell on the Google Play Store for $4.99. You know, oh, that, yeah. that, that shit by itself, man. That wouldn't be bad if, if they had gone back and just like properly adapted it for a PC, showed me that you'd done some work to earn that extra, to, mm-hmm. you know, those few extra shekels, not just a few, a fuckload more. You know, I, I could have cut them some slack. Like if the first sign of an attempt was made to do that, it wasn't as far as the game. What do you have for me? Top down, sneak around. Stealth Simulator on a fucking wicked tight budget, stupidly overpriced. There's nothing new, nothing original. And on top of that, added bonus of being irritating as hell to control. Oh, so, yeah. No, the, the, the controls are just the worst. And the moment you unlock the guns, it just feels so bad. How do you it, make a game? No. You see, what we need, we should have given a copy to Scott Michaud because he's got that like $2,000 
30 oh, inch touch, touch screen yeah, the so touch screen. yeah. <laughs> could have tried to yes. play it and uh yeah that, i wonder if that would even work under linux probably not i don't know um well, he, he, he's a, he's a one that's using anyways. it should work out of the box mm. <laughs> yeah and, and anyways chair wise i'm gonna give this one this this, oh, yeah. this gets one because you know the chairs cannot divide by zero uh they don't nope. they don't acknowledge yeah. the existence of zero it's not a number for them and and you know like most games uh the the chair acquisition is weighted in favor to give everyone an average score and this one technically walks away with an average score of two chairs you know for the final but because it no. technically starts yeah it it runs but this no it technically don't. starts but this is also the important thing of QA yeah it runs now we need to throw an asteroid on this because fuck this game it's overpriced oh, yeah. It's bullshit. It's a. This is what's wrong with shit on Steam right now. This is lazily this done. This is shovelware. This is exactly what's wrong. This with is Steam really, right now. really fancy shovelware. I fa- yeah. Fancy, it's got some unity assets in there. there. Yeah, fancy. Fancy's kind of stretching it. It's yeah. Two, yeah, two with an asteroid. I, I I wish an asteroid would crash through my hotel room and kill me and, <laughs> instead of having to play this game. <laughs> that kind of asteroid. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right, that, that about wraps it up. Coming up next, we talk about the intricacies of moving between Steam regions and an actual fun self game. Well, well, well. Would you look at that? Oh, is it's it time for Jordan time to put more towels on his head? Well, no, that was the previous segment. Uh, we don't talk about that anymore. Uh, but no, this is that particular part of the show the very last part of the show where you have a chance to scream in our direction and a lot of you actually did this week so uh we may only have two uh in the rundown here but we got all your hate mail and the relationship advice we got yeah, that. Uh, that, that that's coming that's coming hey man, yeah, that, keep, that's keep those thing. emails coming but how, how do they get in contact is it some cryptic system with smoke signals and uh Reindeer? Carrier pigeons. Yeah. Yes. A reindeer and, uh, you know, big. No, let's not go there. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, get in touch with us by going to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a little form you need to fill in there with some guidelines at the top. Maybe if you're a game developer and you want us to play your game, come on. Three keys. Not that hard. Hey, man. Somebody uh, says, hey. uh, took advantage of that this week. I... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, they, they, did. They, they, they did. They they actually can read the instructions. Hell, even Death Point. They figured, <laughs> yes. They, they yes, figured they, it out. For all the problems the game had, the developer actually sent us the three keys, so kudos to them for that. But yeah, just pick uh, some uh, LGC Weekly for some hate mail right here, right now, or some relationship advice for uh, Jordan's um, entertainment. <laughs> Hey man, swing lines. I, I, man. I, 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 I call it total eclipse of the fart. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh shit. There we go. Here, this is going to be Jordan's call in show. It's going to be called Swangers. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's the gang Swanger. I know, man, like Swingers, dude, but Swangers. <laughs> what, what? Okay, what, what, what's, what's, the, what's the first hate mail, Pedro? Oh, actually, <laughs> actually, yeah, what, what, what is it? The first hate mail uh, is uh, actually aimed at me. Uh, Sigman asks. Since you moved to Britannia, did you do anything special about your Steam account? Can you access all of the games you purchased before? Do you use a VPN? If you pay in British pounds now, will you be able to access your games if you move again? I know that people moving to Asia, most notably Japan, cannot access their games anymore unless they spoof their IP and such. Well, uh, no, uh, because I can see how that would be an issue if you're moving from a place with relatively loose uh, game uh, restrictions to one such as Japan, which for all the anime titties that they have roaming around, they (laughs) they tend to be a a bit more restrictive when it comes to games. But since I moved from Portugal to the UK, they're technically both in the EU still. So it's the same area and outside of the price differences, because here it's... um, pounds and in portugal it was euros it's the same region for all intents and purposes so outside of that 
uh, key that Ven sent me for Mighty Number no. Nine from Humble, I didn't really need a VPN for anything. Mm. So yeah. um, one of the questions I do want to ask is, Jordan, you're in Finland, and that that was something I forgot to even like bring up or mention. It's like, oh shit, what if you can't access any of your games? Well, I I had a bunch of them pre-installed on this, and I don't think Steam's going to stop me from accessing the stuff that I have installed locally here. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to uh, get uh, Death Point installed while here as well. So I don't think that's too big of an issue. My region is still set to Canada, though. That would be really, really dumb, though. It, like, I'm, I'm not sure how this actually works in practice. If you, like, take your laptop on a trip and go back. Like, hey, I want to play some Steam games on the trip. No, you can't because you're in the wrong region. It's Depends a little idiotic. on the region, yes. If instead of going to Finland, you'd gone to, say, Germany... Quite a few of those FPSs you have in your account probably wouldn't fly. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, you know what? Uh, you know what? I'm going to be in Germany next week, so maybe maybe I'll give fire up the shot, laptop yeah. and give, give it a check. Yeah, who knows? Would be great. Um, coming up next, Matt King. Yeah, he uh, he's talking about the uh, Hitman. He says, hey, guys, I watched you review Hitman a long while back, and I totally agree with you. I initially purchased the PlayStation 4 to play the game. But when it sucked so hard, I gave the system to my brother. Wow, you hated the game so much you <laughs> ditched your console. But after buying the game for Linux and playing through all the levels, it seems that Hitman hardens and becomes a bullet sponge. Super hardcore, super hard to kill. Tis true. My opinion of the game has changed, and I believe it is the very, very, very best of the series. Love, Matt King. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, don't don't uh, buy games Hitman on PlayStation game, uh, 4. Buy them on Linux. And if you do buy a game on PlayStation 4, <laughs> give the PlayStation 4 away. I think that's the moral you of the story. that here. empty. Give your PlayStation 4 away. Well, I mean, when he gets done playing um, Fallout, he probably will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that was definitely one of the things I, I talked about uh, during our chairquisition of Hitman. Was Hitman's always been portrayed as the bullet sponge dodging Neo from the Matrix ultimate badass fuck you superpower Mutant. Well, that, that that's kind of in the movies. The, the games really do try to make you stealth a little bit more. But yeah, that's the thing with any of these games, though. You go through the progression tree, and you get all the hit point upgrades, and you get all the armor upgrades, and all of a sudden you're just a tank. And yeah, but uh, I just can't believe that the, the um, game industry is so bankrupt that they took the source material from a movie and didn't, uh, you know, copy it correctly. <laughs> You mean that movie that totally ripped off a series with Jessica Alba? Yes. <laughs> no, um, but it, it's good to know that he does evolve later in the game. I don't know, man. I mean, like the first, what what is Hitman Go broken into? Like part one, the different parts. Yeah, uh, the the chapters in yeah, various um, countries. I, I never got much further than to like the second one because kind of honest, it kind of runs like dog shit. So Yeah, no, it didn't run very well. That's the sole reason I didn't keep playing it. Because the first mission, I... Admittedly, I got a bit lucky because I managed to unlock the suit only. Don't get detected. Don't, uh... Like, don't... Uh, no one finds the bodies. And still managed to drop the lady's body onto the guy's body down below. And no one saw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I felt pretty good about that. And I kind of wanted to keep playing, but... With the FX eighty three seventy E, it was a bit shit. I, I See, think if, you, like, if, if you're in Intel land, though, it runs fine. So ish. I mean, even in Ryzen land, it's ish. Uh, it's it can still take dips. The Hitman game I want to see is something like based on the last Hitman movie. Uh, it's uh, like a bit of like Mad Max bullet time. M- M- uh, not Mad Max. Uh, Max Payne bullet time oh, with yes. M- Mad Max. You know, Arkham Knight fighting combos, unlockable bullshit. Like, you know, I, I want a slaughter page, you know, of just murderation completely through and pew, pew, pew. pew. The whole sneaking around thing, I, which basically just gets to the point where you get the sniper rifle and fucking blow one thing up and cause some chain event of fuckery that yeah. ends up killing the person some people that's your jam and i totally respect you for that it's just not mine mm. so yeah. the, the moral of the story is everyone wants to kill people in their own special ways yeah man uh, i think that is absolutely uh 
a thing. And I think I'll kill you, Ven. <laughs> promises, promises, bitch. Um, on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time, except for next week, because we know you skipped to the end. The hate mail is your favorite part. 430 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Google it. You'll find it. It'll be on our schedule. We'll mention it Wednesday. It'll be on Patreon. We will mention it before we go live. So when you show up and no one's there, you have no one to blame. You can find me. Put Vin Stone into the Googles. Just don't do it on Bing. Shit will implode and you will be held responsible. If you Google, if you Google or if you Bing my name, you get some sort of horrible, horrible German bondage porn. But you can find me otherwise at The Burning Fool on Twitter. Plus Jordan Swung on Google+. Plus. And if you Google for my name, you get my Twitter profile. It's like the third option nowadays. Why do you people do this to me? <laughs> but hey, by all means, do hit me up on Twitter. That's at unaccounted for that's f-o-u-r or plus but but toes on google plus all right uh gentlemen did, did we learn anything this week uh no well actually we did uh yeah. don't don't play death point don't don't play death point and uh, <laughs> i mean that was a reasonable assumption to be made well uh d- don't try to read the intro to death point or the description <laughs> of the straight face or, 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 or listen to the dialogue because oh. it sucks <laughs> that's good it's got a brilliant all right, I think we're going to keep the credits that I don't have time to make, but... Uh, <laughs> Yay, credits, look at them. We can't see them, uh, but you can. Uh-huh. You, 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 you can have some Frank. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there will oh, definitely oh, be oh, some oh my God, credits coming up over that. It'll, it'll yeah. be brilliant. <laughs> That's... Now that I know that I can layer first. that effect with the camera, I, I ooh, the amount of fuckery we can get into now um surprise frank <laughs> frighteningly surprising frank we'll give the credits just a little bit because we want all the beautiful people to see him rolling they hating or loving. they trolling gonna catch us riding dirty <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch him riding dirty casting dirty <laughs> see you all in hell and or next week donuts <laughs> next week in hell Needful Don't things. You know I'm wide and dirty. Hey, we didn't have any drop frames. Sweet. That that kind of happens when you have a dedicated video card. <laughs> oh, so dirty. What movie is that from? <laughs> It's, uh, it's that one where he goes, I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I think. Oh, that's a fucked up weird one, too. Yeah. I mean, okay, Nick Cage film, but come on. Five dudes.